my team, Joseph McKinley, Christopher Beetle, and myself are pleased to uh, present you this work, which is a theory of nonlinear dynamics for neurostimulation. Our goal is to explore the mechanism of neurostimulation with theory. Uh, as we know, serendipity has guided uh, the development of uh, therapeutic interventions with neurostimulation from the beginning with highly variable subjects' responsiveness, uh, parameter tuning, which is often entirely um, uh, empirical and uh, an underdeveloping of uh, explanatory mechanisms. Today, we would like to focus on oscillatory coordination dynamics because the change in excitability are already better understood. We want to understand how neurostimulation, some of the models of neurostimulation change the dynamic self-organization and functional coordination between neural ensemble. We'll provide one example of mechanism, a third party stabilization, and we will provide conceptual foundations. If we look at all the uh, different approaches to uh, neurostimulation, we can uh, see that they cover three types of approach. Perturbative approach, such as those applied in TMS, seems to have, uh, as principle, uh, an attempt to uh, switch uh, the dynamical regime of a state from a less healthy attractor to a more healthy attractor. Adaptive approach, which are used for a certain period of time, for instance, transcranial alternative current stimulations, which is used uh, for a certain period of time, but not permanently, seems to seek neuroplasticity or in dynamical parlance bifurcations between the states of the brains. And a coercive approach, those which are applied uh, permanently, such as in uh, deep brain stimulation, seems to be able, seems to target the uh, entrainment of a forcing of the brain dynamics uh, to the external stimulation mechanism. As you can see here, a lot of those terminology comes straight from the language of nonlinear dynamics. We left in the last slide, at, to your attention, a little lexicon of what those terms mean to us. And you can use the pause button in the video to explore them in more details. But today, we are going to tell you a little bit more about this third party restoration of attractors. This is a work which was conducted by Joseph McKinley here. Uh, who has been applying a mathematical model with three oscillators to try to understand uh, the complexity that arise from more than two, uh, the coordination of more than two oscillators. And this work is based on uh, this advance, this mathematical model that was developed by uh, Meng Seng Zhang and colleagues uh, in 2019. You recognize in the equations uh, something that resembled the very well-known Kuramoto model uh, that computational neuroscientists are often very familiar with, uh, with a first order coupling term here, AIG sinus of phi i minus phi g, as well as this second order coupling term, which comes uh, historically from uh, the study of coordination dynamic in the behavior and in the brain. It's called the hacken kelso bunce model, HKB. And this second order uh, coupling term is absolutely fundamental for complexity, bistable tendencies, and metastability. So in his work, uh, Joseph has tried to conceptualize two brain uh, regions that you can see here. And those brain regions were set in a range of their parameter where they are inherently monostable. So as you can see in the potential uh, reported here in the front of the graph, there's a, a, a valley here at in phase, zero radiant of their uh, relative phase, but there's no attractor in anti-phase. Um, so by model design, uh, we should find that those brain area are incompetent for anti-phase and should only coordinate in phase. Uh, in this model, uh, Joseph coupled both of those brain area to a stimulations to a third party oscillator. But this third party oscillator was uh, chosen in a range of a parameter space where it was competent to have bistability with both brain area. And as you can see, it's inherent uh, potential that you can see here as both dwells in antiphase. That means that the stimulation and the brain area will go both uh, opposite to one another like this, as well as toward in phase where both the stimulation and the brain area will go up and down together. When we look at the potential in two dimensions, when uh, the uh, system of uh, free party oscillator is set in place, we see the surprising emergence of uh, 
attractor uh, valley is here along the line of uh, phi one minus phi two equal pi radiant. That means the uh, attractor antiphase here. They should not be there, but the uh, ability of the system of free oscillator to create antiphase between uh, the brain area region one and two here has been restored by the help of the neurostimulations. So those are the two dwells, uh, those are the two valleys that you can see here and here. So the stimulation, a theoretical model of a stimulation that has helped us uh, to develop uh, attractor landscape that are additional attractors. And this might help in a therapeutic setting to find healthy regime of coordinations and to replace an healthy uh, attracting regime with more healthy one. So why should we care about antiphase? Um, in uh, our model, mathematical model that we claim are valid for brain coordination dynamics, which have been developed in those paper here, uh, we have found that uh, the brain was capable of regimes which are, were at time bistable in phase and antiphase, and so under some other condition monostable and under some other conditions still metastable. Uh, in a landmark MRI studies in 2005, Fox Raykel and I also uh, uh, et al also uncovered anti-correlated network, which uh, if you find a, a set of brain area which at time is correlated antiphase and at other uh, point in time correlated in phase, then you have an evidence of bistability. So this was done in fMRI, and our group obviously for many many years now have tried to characterize uh, the bistability, the multistability, and the metastability of a neural ensemble using electrophysiology with the difficulty and the caveat that uh, the uh, essential dipolar nature of electrical field uh, create some spurious antiphase that needs to be taken into consideration. So in conclusion, we provided uh, evidence of conditional multistability and uh, this uh, evidence in the model create uh, 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 leads to uh, develop electrocytical interventions uh, using nonlinear theoretical modeling. And these are the uh, little definition that I promised to you a little bit earlier. I thank you for your attention and I will be glad uh, that you uh, interact with us with questions, comments and suggestions. Thank you for your time.